Hello, this is your daily devotion for Tuesday, April 6, and our reading this morning comes to us from the second book of Kings, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. After the death of Ahab, Moab rebelled against Israel. Ahaziah had fallen through the lattice in his upper chamber in Samaria and lay injured. So he sent messengers telling them, Go, inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Akron, whether I shall recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Get up, go to meet the messengers of the king in Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore thus says the Lord, You shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but you shall surely die. So Elijah went. Second Kings begins with a chapter and a half of violence. There's no other way to describe it. And you can't really say it's violence that in some way isn't earned. Our main character here is a king. A king of Israel who, once he receives injuries from a fall, wants to know whether he's going to recover, but he doesn't ask the Lord whether he's going to recover. He goes and asks Beelzebul, a pagan god, or tries to. But his messengers are met along the way by God's prophet, Elijah, who taunts them and says, what, you didn't have another god you could ask? I'm right here! And then he does the other prophet's work for them. By saying, you know, you're not going to get up out of this bed. It's simply not going to happen. The same cycle repeats itself a couple more times before eventually Ahaziah dies. Elijah is taken up into heaven on a flaming chariot, and his um, replacement, Elisha, takes the role as Israel's chief prophet. But people don't respect him. Some children taunt him while he's on his way into the city. Elisha calls down a curse on them. And two angry she-bears come along and maul 42 boys. You could, if you were so inclined, call this problematic. Ahaziah certainly knew what he was doing. But how were the young boys of Israel to know that Elisha was God's prophet? Yet at the same time, taunting someone, making fun of someone, they called him baldhead, is not good. There's never been a society that called that a good thing to do. And good, responsible parents try to discipline their children in such a way so that they don't do things like that. I'll grant that being mauled by a she-bear is maybe a bit of a harsh punishment for it. But the principle remains. This is just something you don't do. I don't know what we can learn from this passage specifically, but we have to acknowledge that there is something of a difference between how God deals with people in the Old Testament and how God deals with people in the New Testament. And that happens for a very simple reason. In the Old Testament, the promise is much more fragile and requires some very direct intervention in order to keep the ball rolling until the right time comes along for Jesus. But after Jesus, the promise is broad and made to everyone. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So it's less necessary for God to intervene in such particular and violent ways. And indeed, the violence greatly diminishes in the New Testament compared to the Old. But it would be wrong to say that many of the bad things that happened in the Old Testament weren't deserved by the people to whom they happened. Maybe not the boys who merely taunted someone they didn't know. But Ahaziah certainly knew that there was a God in Israel. And he should have been inquiring of that God. And not some pagan God that wasn't even from his people. Let us pray. We thank you God that you were so willing to preserve the promise that you made to Abraham until such time as it was right to fulfill it through Jesus. 
and broaden that promise to all the world. Help us to not always question your methods, or to look at what happened then through the eyes of now, but rather to understand why this was necessary and why the moment you no longer had to intercede so directly and so violently, you stopped doing it. We're not smarter than you. Don't let us think that we are. And don't let us be too put off by the things you had to do in order to keep your promise. Rather, let us be inspired by them and understand that you're still every bit as tenacious in keeping your promises today. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again soon.